Hey people, it's Zach. Let's do some math. Why not? Let's say a company is given a budget of $1 million to make a product. 300000 of that goes into paying everyone who's going to be involved with it, you know, the workers and stuff. And 699990 goes into marketing, which is your billboards and commercials and all that. So, the total left to make the actual product... And that's why consumers always get stuck with cheap products. Do you ever just want to make a product and let everyone know about it? But how? Well, you could start by doing something that won't put you in jail. Buy my product or get shot, you miserable consumer. Marketing is key to any product or company's success. It takes a lot of thought and a lot of people to make them want to buy whatever the heck this thing is. But in order to do that, you need to find a sweet spot. Your commercial has to advertise your product, but in a fun and interesting way that'll keep the consumer going, I need this, I need this! I mean, making customers angry by interrupting their show and playing a long and boring ad is really a bad way to get them on your side, right? Well, I'm glad you understand that, but your brother still has some learning to do. Back in the day, companies mainly had to use newspapers or radio to advertise their products. No highways to put billboards on, and no TVs to run ads on. It was really a different time, back when our kids weren't being exposed to this on a daily basis. But something had to change, and it needed to happen fast. Unfortunately, only one of those things happened. When home TVs were first introduced in the 1940s and 50s, we had opened up a whole new world for these companies. No longer did they have to explain what their product was on the radio or put it into writing on the newspapers. They could just show consumers what their product was and how it worked. And this led to a bunch of companies coming up with new mascots and jingles just to get their products stuck in consumers' heads. Some companies had jingles and mascots before this, although this definitely made them more widespread and recognizable. This is also around the time when these companies got more attention and exposure, which brought their revenue and sales up even higher than before. If a company was launching a brand new action figure, make a cool background, blast some rock music, and you got yourself a screaming seven-year-old, and a ton of revenue. So let's go through and look at some of these commercials, because what else was I supposed to do? Let the Geico insurance people be the unsung heroes of the commercial industry? Yeah, let's start with Geico. Everybody loves Geico, especially when you stretch the definition of everybody. They're your typical insurance company, but their commercials are a little bit more interesting. Back in the early days, Geico commercials really were not anything too special. They didn't really have a mascot or running joke, they sort of did different things each time. Like, they did some with this hand-drawn art style, and they did your other typical live-action ones. But then, in 2000, Jesus finally came back down to Earth. In a form that nobody saw coming. The Geico Gecko, officially called Martin. If you call him that, your grave's already dug. He usually talks with a cockney accent, and throughout the years he's starred in some of the best commercials ever. Like seriously, there truly is nothing like a Geico commercial. They're the only commercials I actually pay attention to when I'm watching TV. I particularly like this one where he's with this guy that purchased a new house, but when they look in the attic, they find a place where an exorcism probably took place. It's not that that place had an exorcism, it's that it needs it. But the Geico Gecko is not the only iconic commercial the Geico marketing team has under their belt. I fondly remember the hump day one with the camel in it. What a fun time. So in the end, Geico commercials are some of the most funny and memorable insurance commercials, heck, even general commercials out there. What can we take away from this? I guess I need to make a trip to the pet store. I'll have a leaderboard throughout this entire video, and since Geico is the first one, obviously they get the number one spot. However, Geico isn't the only insurance company out there. I know we would all prefer that, but some people have to ruin things for other people. If you take the E from Geico, burn all the other letters, add a J, an A, and a K, what do you get? State Farm, everyone's favorite insurance company. Why did you deny my home loan? A piece of hail literally fell from the ceiling and killed my cat. And if you don't agree, I dare you to come up with some reasons why. Okay. Now most people know them for two things. Their catchy little jingle. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Jake. Everybody loves Jake, am I right? Yeah, I'm talking about you last. So State Farm has a slogan, lots of companies do, but State Farm's slogan is truly something special. Honestly, State Farm doesn't have the best commercials, but to give them credit, they do have the best jingle out of any company. We'll get to that later. Originally, the person who sung this song sounded like they were trying way too hard for an insurance commercial. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's like, it's just an insurance company commercial, stop acting like it's your big break. 
This jingle was originally created in 1971. Prior to this, State Farm's jingle was... Jake from State Farm is the mascot of State Farm's branding. He originally started appearing in commercials back in 2011 and was played by Jake Stone. I'll put State Farm at number two, since it's only the second company we've looked at. Burger King. They have a purpose, I swear, my scientific research has not gone to waste. Now, Burger King has been around since the 1950s, and back in the day, they had your typical commercials. They established the Burger King King, and why does this exist? But the thing they're most well known for, at least to me, is the Have It Your Way ad campaign. They originally started it back in 1974, and the ad features a catchy song in the background, while various customers order specific orders. The idea is that Burger King lets you have it your way, and you can customize your food however you want. Because, I mean, McDonald's can't let you take the onions off your burger, it's in the Constitution! Besides that, they don't really have anything noteworthy. They poke fun at McDonald's sometimes, and occasionally the King will appear, and they actually brought back the old song in the new commercials, which I think is kinda cool. Although I don't really like it when companies try to bait people with nostalgia. Like, Burger King changed their logo back to the one they had in the 90s, and while that is sorta cool, I guess... I can't help but be skeptical. It's like, we love our history, and we want to bring back our old logo to show we're still the same old Burger King! Yeah, you can't fool me, my Burger King alarm was going off the charts when you did that. Pizza Hut did this exact same thing too, it was kind of like a trend for a little bit there. So honestly, I'll put Burger King in last place, just nothing too memorable really. Alright, now let's do... Yeah, you thought you were getting away without criticism, buddy? Yeah, join the club. Pizza Hut is one of the most popular pizza restaurants. I don't like them. Yeah, that's right, I said it. What are you gonna do about it? But I mean, come on, everybody has that memory in school where if you read a certain amount of books or fill some other criteria, your teacher gave you those passes to get a deep dish pizza. That was always really memorable. And their commercials haven't been anything too interesting. They actually sponsored Back to the Future 2 and used that in their marketing back when it came out. They've had various slogans throughout the years. In the early 2000s, their slogan was, Gather around the good stuff. They changed it in 2008 to say, Now you're eating. That sounds like one of the most generic slogans for a restaurant ever. Then they changed it in 2009 to say, Your favorites, your pizza. Then it was Make It Great in 2012, and now they have, No One Out Pizza's The Hut. And I think this is the best one they've had so far. They never had a proper mascot, but they did have the Pizza Head show back in the 90s. Like I said, they don't have an official spokesperson, but this guy keeps appearing in their commercial, so that's probably the closest thing they have. Also, on a side note, they have this weird thing called Wing Street. I used to think it was a separate restaurant, but apparently it just means that the restaurants sell wings. I don't know, that's what Wikipedia told me. Truly the most trustworthy source out there. I'll put Pizza Hut above Burger King, but below State Farm. I like some of their newer commercials, but there isn't really anything special about anything they've ever done. Every family has that son that is the favorite. And then there's the son that talks about corporate commercials. To be fair, I don't like talking about corporate commercials, but I have to do it. Who's forcing me to do it? Let's move on. Bottom line, Pizza Hut commercials are okay, just kind of boring and not memorable. Now let's move on to the best fast food chain. I don't care what anybody else says. I've already had a slice of pizza thrown at me. I can't get any worse than that. And that restaurant is... McDonald's. Now McDonald's, they've always had pretty good commercials. They may not beat Burger King in service, but at least the Constitution allows them to do something. In the beginning, pretty standard. They had this weird patty guy as their mascot. I'm so glad we didn't grow up in the timeline where they kept this. Thankfully, they eventually changed it to Ronald McDonald. Honestly, whenever I was a kid, I thought the McDonald's they had in their name referred to Old McDonald from the nursery rhyme. He's just a humble farmer who owns a multi-billion dollar company, but nope, I guess this is who they're talking about. McDonald's likes to do all kinds of things with their advertising. They're the ones I see the most commonly on billboards, and they've even sponsored some NASCAR racers. But one of their more recent successes have been the Celebrity Meals. Basically, they take a random celebrity, get said celebrity's favorite meal, and repackage it. They did it with BTS, Travis Scott. They also released adult Happy Meals. This is one of the most confusing products in my eyes. Obviously, they're playing around with the fact that Happy Meals are for kids, so the adults can't be happy. Don't act like adults aren't afraid to steal their kids' Happy Meals. They don't care. Clearly, they do. They partnered up with Cactus Plant Flea Market, and before you ask what that is, do I look like the kind of person who would know? Instead of a standard cheeseburger, you can get a Big Mac or a 10-piece nugget. 
Yeah, the internet kind of freaked out about these things, but at the same time, the internet would freak out if someone saw a fly do a backflip. It doesn't take that much to impress them. And now you can find the toys that are included in those meals rotting on eBay for hundreds of dollars. Even when they were still selling, I saw prices like this. It's like, guys! I know you want people to pay these prices, but that doesn't mean they will. And some people are actually buying them. Why? Anyways, McDonald's also has their mascot, Ronald McDonald. They never use him. Literally, the only place you can ever find them are either on some signage for their charity, or very subtly on the wrappers and boxes. We will not stand for this. So McDonald's is going above Pizza Hut at number 3. The celebrity meals are pretty cool, and the adult Happy Meals were fun to watch until they weren't. Alright, now let's look at Arby's commercials. Everybody loves Arby's, they have the driest chicken on the planet, yet they don't seem to use that fact in their commercials. Now, Arby's originally started in 1964, and back then they didn't have their famous slogan, We Have the Meats. In fact, it's relatively new, only being created back in 2014. Now, Arby's food is pretty good. I mean, come on, don't you want to ingest this into your body? I think Arby's will move to last place, simply because there's not that much there. They don't have recurring jokes or mascots like some other restaurants, and they're kind of boring, honestly. Usually, their strategy for their commercials is white background. And there's also Coca-Cola commercials, too. You know, they originally had a mascot, Max Headroom. He would appear in 3D simulations, and at the time, they were state-of-the-art. Of course, now looking back at them, they were kind of creepy. They don't really use them anymore, probably for the best. Like I said, he was sort of creepy. But another advertising campaign for Coke is their competition with Pepsi. Coke and Pepsi's rivalry has to be one of the most popular rivalries out there. People are always saying which one they prefer, and I prefer neither. Yeah, I'm primarily a water drinker, so I can't really say which one I think is better, but I like blue, so I'm just gonna say Pepsi. But I think the rivalry actually works out for both of them. They get free publicity, and they each get to bag on the other. I don't really see that many Coke commercials, and I don't really have a slogan or mascot, at least not anymore, so they're pretty boring. I think I'll put them in last. Now, Pepsi is a similar story. No real mascot, but their current slogan is Better With Pepsi, but previously they've had ones like That's What I Like, I think I'll put them above Coke simply because they do actually have a slogan, but they're still pretty boring, all things considered. And second to last, Apple! F. Apple advertising is interesting. They don't really have a slogan or mascot. Each commercial is different. Back in the day when they had the colorful iMacs, that definitely got some people's attention, but it was the release of the iPod that truly kick-started Apple's notability. And when the iPhone came out in 2007, that just added fuel to the fire. The making money fire, not actual fire. And like I said, they never really had a solid ad campaign they stuck with. The most notable was this Mac vs. PC one where there's a cool hip-hop guy who resembles Mac, and a boring businessman who resembles a PC. They also have the Underdog series on their YouTube channel, but I don't think they ever oh, aired these. Just an oval so Apple is moving up to second. I like how each commercial is a fresh new thing. It keeps them from getting boring. And while I do think it is important to have a mascot and slogan, Apple is one of the few companies who makes it work. Alright, we can do one more. How about the one with rats in their food? KFC is the place to get fried chicken, never mind. Definitely not the most squeaky clean image out there, they've had some controversies in the past. It mainly has to do with how the chicken doesn't taste as good as it used to, and that it's unhealthy. First of all, if you're gonna go eat at a place that has this plus this, you should really expect that. And I think their chicken is fine, just as good as I remember, but hey, apparently I didn't grow up when it was still good, so I guess I missed out, apparently. KFC was started back in 1952 by Harlan Sanders, who was the mascot of the KFC company. It was actually pretty smart to do self-advertising, not many companies do that now, but it worked to KFC's advantage. As time went on, they slowly started expanding their operations, and today, they're everywhere. Harlan Sanders became pretty popular, even signing autographs and having a bunch of fans. But after his death in 1980, that's when some of the criticism started to arise. Many felt that after he died, the food started getting cheaper in quality, and they were cutting corners. KFC denied these claims, of course, but the protests went on. It also didn't help that they kept doing things that Harlan Sanders probably wouldn't have liked. Although it was kinda like this before he died, you can find quotes of him going to KFC franchises and absolutely flipping out. Just get to the rat part already! Yeah, so this image was circulating around for a while. It shows a customer's order. It, look, it looks like a rat. The guy who posted it said he bit into it and it tasted terrible. Now taking that into account, and the shape it's in, that freaked some people out. 
It even got some news stations' attention, which just made the rumor spread even quicker. Now, KFC tried to get the man to send the chicken in for testing, so they could see if it actually was a rat, but he refused. I think this is when some people started to become skeptical. Well, I mean, if he won't send it in for testing, then maybe he has something to hide. I mean, it's totally possible it was just bad chicken and the sheep was a coincidence. If you look closely at the bite he took, you can see white meat chicken. But this definitely freaked some people out, like I said, and made KFC's image go even further down the drain. But hey, the colonel still appears in commercials. Now it's just a recreation of his voice, and sometimes they bring in actors to play the role of him, and his face still appears on the boxes and logo. So KFC, I think I'll put them below McDonald's at the number 4 spot. I still think they have some good ones every now and then, although they don't do anything that interesting. It's just telling you how good their food is, which apparently is the whole point of a commercial. Who knew? And that pretty much wraps up commercials. You know, they're such a big part of our lives at this point. I mean, you probably even watched one before watching this. But because of this, I think we fail to realize how weird they can be sometimes. Like, they're funny and entertaining, but it's just interesting to see how much they've evolved. I mean, back in the day, they pretty much consisted of, Hello and welcome, I will now list all the reasons you should buy our product, goodbye. Nowadays, they need gimmicks and mascots and catchy music and jingles. And I will say, I think the commercials in the 80s and 90s were pretty cool. I mean, you can find entire channels dedicated to just re-uploading old commercials, and it's fascinating to see how much they've changed. It was mainly kids' commercials, but not always. They had bright colors and songs. Every single commercial had to have a song. It was insane. So companies will always keep changing with the trends and trying new things, and sometimes that's great, and sometimes it's not. And they will always advertise things about their food that make them special. Except rats. They should probably leave that part out.